Hey guys, thanks for being so patient with me while I've been in between uploads. Um, <laughs> we've been busy with my six huskies and um, somebody's been targeting my social medias. So both my Snapchat and my Instagram both got deleted. So I'm just trying to start those back over again. And it's been a pain in the butt. Um, but from now on, I'm going to post my link tree everywhere. And that's going to be the most up to date if anything should happen to any future accounts that I have. Um, it will be up to date on my link tree. So if you're gonna go ahead and follow me on there, if you wanna follow my socials, um, feel free to. And one more thing, sorry. <laughs> um, last time I was doing this, I started from chapter one. It was kind of boring. I'm gonna start on chapter three today because that's when Harry Potter is actually like in the story. <laughs> so. Harry Potter was snoring loudly. <sighs> He'd been sitting in a chair beside his bedroom window for the best part of four hours, staring out at the darkening street and had finally fallen asleep with one side of his face pressed against the cold window pane. <sighs> his glasses askew and his mouth wide open. <laughs> The misty fog of his breath had left on the window, sparkled in the orange glare of the street light, a lamp outside, and the artificial light drained his face of all color so that he looked ghostly beneath his shock of untidy hair, untidy black hair. The room was strewn with various possessions and a good smattering of rubbish. All feathers, apple cores, and sweet wrappers littered the and a number of spell books lay higgledy piggledy among the tangled robes on his bed, and a mess of newspapers sat in a puddle of light on his desk. <sighs> the headline of one blared Harry Potter, the chosen one. Rumors continue to fly about the mysterious recent disturbance at the Ministry of Magic. <sighs> he who must not be named was cited once more. We're not allowed to talk about it. Don't ask me anything, said one agitated obliviator who refused to give his name <laughs> as he left the ministry last night. Nevertheless, highly placed sources within the ministry have confirmed that the disturbance centered on the fabled Hall of the Prophecy. <laughs> um, <laughs> though ministry spokes wizard Hold on. My grandson Neville, a good friend of Harry Potter's, incidentally, who fought the Death Eaters alongside him at the Ministry in June, and but the rest of the story was obscured by the large bird cage standing on top of it. Inside it was the magnificent snowy owl. Her amber eyes surveyed the room imperiously her head swiveling occasionally to gaze at her snoring master. <laughs> Once or twice she clicked her beak impatiently, but Harry was too deeply asleep to hear her. <sighs> um, a large trunk stood in the very middle of the room. <laughs> its lid was open, it looked expectant, <laughs> yet it was almost empty, but but for a residue of old underwear, sweets, empty ink bottles, and broken quills that coated the very bottom. <sighs> Nearby on the floor lay a purple leaflet emblazoned with the words issued on behalf of the Ministry of Magic, <sighs> protecting your home and family against dark forces. The wizarding community is currently under threat from an organiz organization called, calling itself, <laughs> I can't focus, um, the Death Eaters. Um, observing the following simple security guidelines will help protect you, your family, and your home from attack. 
You're advised not to leave. You're advised not to leave the house alone. Particular care should be taken during the hours of darkness. Whenever possible, arrange to complete journeys before night has fallen. Uh, review the security arrangements around your house, making sure that all family members are aware of emergency measures such as shield and disillusionment charms. And in the case of underage family members, slide along apparition. Um, agree on security questions with close friends and family so as mm, to detect deaf eaters masquerading as others by use of the polyjuice potion. See page two. Um, should you feel that a family member, colleague, friend, or neighbor is acting in a strange ma is acting in a strange manner, contact the magical law enforcement squad at once. They may have been put under the imperious curse. Uh, um, should the dark mark appear over any dwelling place or other building, do not enter. <laughs> but contact the aura office immediately. Um, unconfirmed sightings suggest that the Death Eaters may now be using it in theory. Um, any sightings of an Inferius or encounters with this being should be reported to the Ministry immediately. in his sleep and his face slid down the window and into his home making his glasses still more lopsided but he didn't wake up uh, um, an alarm clock repaired by Harry several years ago tick loudly on the cell Covered in thin, slanty writing. Um, can't see that here. <laughs> oh, uh, Harry had read this letter so often since its arrival three weeks ago that although it had been delivered in a tightly frilled scroll, it now lay quite flat. A growing number of the wizarding community believe that the Death Eaters, now serving sentences in Azkaban, for trespass and attempted theft were attempting to seal a prophecy. <laughs> the nature of that prophecy is unknown. All the speculation is ripe that it concerns Harry Potter. <laughs> the only person ever <laughs> known to have survived the killing curse and who is also known to have been at the ministry on the night in question. <laughs> Some are going as so far as to say, as so far as to call Harry Potter the chosen one, believing the prophecy names him as the only one who will be able to rid of us of of he who must not be named. The current whereabouts of the prophecy, if it exists, are unknown. A second newspaper lay beside the first. This one bore the headline, Scrimmager Succeeds Fudge. Most of this front page was taken up with a large black and white picture of a man with a lion-like mane of thick and rather, of thick hair and a rather ravaged face. The picture was moving, and the man was waving at the ceiling. Rufus Scrimmager, previously head of the Aura Office in the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, has succeeded Cornelius Fudge as the Minister of Magic. 
The appointment has largely been greeted with enthusiasm by the Wyvern community. Though, rum though rumors of a rift between the new minister and Albert Dumbledore, newly reinstated chief warlock of the Wizagamot, surfaced within hours of Scrimgeour taking office. Scrimgeour's representatives admitted that he had met with Dumbledore at once upon the taking possession of the top job, but refused to comment on the topics under discussion. Albus Dumbledore is known to, and the article cuts off, the left of this paper sat another, which had been folded so that a story bearing the title Ministry Guarantees Student Safety was visible. The newly appointed Minister of Magic, Lucas Scrimgeour, spoke today of the tough new measures taken by the Ministry to ensure the safety of students returning to Hogwarts, a school of witchcraft and wizardry this autumn. <laughs> For obvious reasons, the Ministry will not be going into detail about its stringent new security plans, said the Minister, although an insider confirmed that the measures include defensive spells and charms, a complex array of counter curses, <laughs> and a small task force of aurors dedicated solely to the protection of Hogwarts School. seem reassured by the minister's tough stand on student safety, uh, said Miss Augusta Longbottom, uh, my grand 